it's officially 2022 and I'm just so grateful that I survived 2021. It was also a challenging year, but definitely better than 2020. I had so much fears in my head that I had to fight for 2021. Because the truth is, I'm just always constantly thinking about my mortality. I'm just worried how long I have left. And the doctors are giving me years, but I... I want to believe that I have more and I'm doing everything I can to make that happen. But yeah, the truth is, if you survive cancer, it just never ends after the treatment. I think you always have this fear of what happens if this progresses, what if my time will be cut short. Uh, what if I just run out of treatment options? You have all these worries and fears and I may look like I have it all together on social media. It's because I really have no choice but to move forward. It's my way to just convince myself that, hey, you know what? We have all these uncertainties. Everyone is unsure about their mortality anyway, but I can't let it just paralyze me. I have to do something about it. So I keep going, but that's the truth like in in our heads we're always worried about how long we have left and so every day to me i push myself to make the most of every single day but sometimes it goes too much up to the point where i'm burning myself out because we just feel like oh maybe i have a shorter time so i have to maximize everything and sometimes i feel guilty when i'm resting or just taking it easy but in fact it's also necessary because how can you do better things when you're not well rested, right? So now I'm learning the balance of also respecting my need to rest and slow things down. Yeah, the worry is always constant. It's always nagging. But I just need to learn how to be friends with it and say, hey, I know that you're there. I know that you're scared and... There's uncertainty and no guarantees, but I don't need to be reminded of this right now. I need to live my life. So can you just please move to the side and let me live today because I have today. And that's all that matters. I'm going to conquer today. So I think I've learned that. That every day, I just take it as it comes and do everything I can to fight off all the the fear and the worry and the doubt and the anxiety because it is very real it is super real the things that you feel in your head is not all made up it's it's a valid legit reason especially if you have a, a health condition it's so valid to just get scared but you cannot let that take over your life otherwise you're just gonna live in fear and get paralyzed and paranoid and and then you're just not gonna move and function and i cannot let that happen i can't allow the fear to win. I have to operate from a place of faith and love and trust, which is what I have been practicing. And thank God I have good friends and loved ones who are there to always remind me of um, moving forward and just ignoring or showing away all the, the fears and the negative thoughts. And I'm just hoping that this year things get better in terms of my health. I mean, it is getting better, so I'm super grateful. But sometimes I entertain thoughts of like, wow, when I'm diagnosed and when I tell people, everyone is just so nice to me. Everyone is just giving me importance and love and Sometimes it makes me really wonder, why does it have to come to this point? Why do people need to come to a place of suffering, like when they're about to die or when they get sick, before they feel the love from people? Why is it that we wait until that time? And I am absolutely guilty with that too, I swear. But I think I'm learning now that as people are alive, we should give them the love and the care and attention and not wait until it's the last minute. Because to me, it's like, wow, so I really have to 
get a diagnosis and put my story out before I actually get my way and feel important. Because there's a certain power to it. And it would be so much better if I am known and loved and be given attention to as being the person that I am instead of because I have a diagnosis. Of course, it's not very cool. But sometimes, hey, if that's the only way to make people come together, if that's the only way to ask forgiveness or receive forgiveness, if that's the only way to get things my way because I have good intentions about something, it's just that I just don't have the right connections, then yeah, so be it, right? I mean, sometimes you have to play with the cards that you're dealt with. And I just do what I can. But yeah. I guess those are my realizations. And now I just really live one day at a time and limit my time for grieving or feeling sad or all these things that really consume you and bring you down because I, I would rather share my joy and my zest for life instead of wallowing on my own. And my loved ones missing out on making good memories with me. Well, yeah. Well, I, I just thought I'd share that, you guys. Uh, I guess these are my New Year thoughts. And I am really hoping for a much better year. I'm hoping it just keeps getting better. Because 2020 has been so tough even for me. And I'm still very surprised that I made it. After all the surgeries and all the the health crisis I had on 2020. I'm just, I'm just beyond grateful that I'm still here right now. And I wish everybody great health and an abundant and joyful yet peaceful 2022. By the way, this is my room. One time, I'm probably going to show you guys around when the time is right. But um, yeah, let's keep on winning. Even if it just simply means getting up in the morning and functioning and just being alive, being here and be fully present, that is more than enough, really. Yeah, so um, thanks for watching and um, a very, very beautiful and successful and healthy 2022.